Hello everyone, Dave Bradshaw reporting for FWAUK.com and I'm pleased, well, exceptionally pleased to be honest, to say I've been joined once again by the FWA's head of content, Alex Shane. Now Alex, in my time in the wrestling industry, I've never been as concerned about someone as I was about you on Halloween at the Expo. You were savagely beaten by the agenda. Can you tell us first of all, well first and foremost, how you're doing? Uh, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing fine. Uh, well, obviously, be, this is for FWAUK.com, so there's certain things that we can't really discuss here that we could if it was a grapple group video. Um, y yeah, I mean, I ended up, I, I spent one night in the hospital. It's been greatly exaggerated. Uh, what happened was um, the kicks to my head by Joel Redman were excessively hard, uh, excessively hard. Uh, all the other wrestlers sort of, you know, saw, saw it. Um, but it, 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 I think it always also had as much to do with, uh, as I was rolled out the ring, um, you can see it on the video, I rolled out and I was uh, dead weight and uh, as I rolled off I hit my head really hard on the floor. So that night I started to feel a bit, I, I felt like a balloon was being blown up on the inside of my head. Um, and it's actually Helen Carr that said to me, you know, I, I think we should take you to the hospital. Um, and then, this, is so, when, how long after the, uh, this was, we, um, I'd probably been back home for maybe, this would 11 o'clock in the evening. About um, so yeah, that was fine. It was just simple swelling of the brain. It sounds uh, you know it sounds worse than it is, but um, but it, it's fine. I'm back. I needed to take a break from things anyway because I had to um, sort of assess the situation, uh, where to direct my anger to a point. Um, but you know it, it is one of these things that happened with pro wrestling. I like you know I like to uh, Martin's got a lot of uh, credit for uh, for, the, for his punches and uh, you know and rightfully so. It was it was a very very uh, vicious beat down I think. But it, it's definitely it's definitely set you know paved the way for the upcoming match with Leroy Kincaid. Now I know uh, as, as a result of of what happened at the Expo, you've got an announcement directly as a consequence of what happened there regarding the main event of European Uprising. What, what is it you want to tell us today? Well, yeah, I mean we've. Um, Again, there's so, so many things that we, we can't sort of say here and I'm really walking between two worlds with this interview. But um, yeah, we, we've had some issues um, with members of the agenda, uh, legitimate issues with the agenda. And I've decided to make myself the special guest referee for that match. Um, I would like to be there in the ring uh, as that happens. Um, I found out firsthand just how things can go awry. Um, also, Leroy Kincaid is a threat to the wrestling establishment. Um, the guy has got some interesting stories to tell, which he's going to tell very shortly about his experiences uh, with the biggest wrestling company in the world. Um, and he is a real life John Cena. Um, so, you know, this match has been built up and we're in a situation where we just want to make sure that um, Somebody's got his back. All the guys have got his back, and this is, you know, this uh, this storyline, as people call it, is far more real than the, than the people at home realise. Uh, you know, I, I get messaged about it all the time from other wrestlers, from people in training schools, and uh, they're telling me incidents. Uh, you know, Nick Riley was viciously beaten up by Martin Stone. I mean, really, really viciously beaten up by Martin Stone. Um, and this was some sort of, I don't know something to do with uh, him and his trainer, Joel Redman, of all people, who is now Drew McDonald's golden boy for a WWE tryout. I know Joel was there um, th this past week. So there's a lot of things going on in the FWA where, where, where the lines are really blurred. You know, TNA crossed the line. We, we blur the line and we blurred it so much that we're all, we, we, we're, we're as much watching what's going on from the outside looking in as, as, as the people on the internet. But uh, Uprising, yeah, it's going to be um, going to be an amazing show, a, a tremendous main event. And, um, and I, I, I just want to be there up close and personal for it. Now, given, given what you've just said, that Uprising is, is, you know, is going to be a great show and it's all going ahead, I assume then the issues we heard about as a result of you know, the viciousness of the beatdown on you at Expo have been resolved because there were rumours flying around for a little while that the guys at Expo weren't happy and they're the same guys who run the memorabilia at the NEC. They were talking about whether, well, according to some of the rumours, they were talking about pulling... Oh no, they weren't rumours. The yeah, show. yeah, they, they no, they weren't rumours. Uh, yeah, they, they, there was some real issues with that. Um, Is, are those so they were resolved? Uh, we, yeah, we've pretty. I mean, you know, it was too late. They had paid for a lot of magazine advertising. That stuff had gone in. Um, you know, we, we have to be on our best behaviour. Uh, all I can say is uh, thanks for bringing that up. That is another reason that I will be involved in that main event. Uh, we, you know, we are now over a barrel in some respects with this main event. It's something that's been built up for a long time. We had it pulled from us once before. We, you know, we're on tender hooks, uh, tender hooks uh, as, as if you know we, we, we really want this to, to, to be the smoothest 
uh, most successful event in the FWA's history. At the same time, there's all these elements um, that, that we we can't control, and it did cause a lot of problems. But we, we seem to have smoothed those over now, and and you know things things are going cool. And it's great because the expo love us as a partner. I mean, absolutely, they want to do massive things with us next year. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you. Um, they understood the situation. They you know they realised it went. A, a little bit further than they were expecting it to go. Um, we, we've rectified stuff and, and we've got some huge plans for next year. I mean, you know, that, for those people that don't know, memorabilia and expo are both happening in the same building, the London XL Centre, on the same weekend, um, which means potentially 80,000 people in that complex. Um, in one place, we're going to have an XWA Adrenaline set up and in the other, we're going to have an FWA. <clears throat> so it's a huge day for British wrestling and, and a huge reach. Uh, potentially for, for our industry. Uh, we won't spend a lot on this, but when you said 80,000 people, that, that figure made me think of another day in, uh, in British wrestling history when, when that many people were all in one place. That was back in 1992 at Wembley Stadium, SummerSlam. Now, of course, Brett the Hitman Hart, who was part of the main event that night, is scheduled to be part of the first ever British Wrestling Hall of Fame coming up as part of European Uprising weekend at Memorabilia. What, can you, what more can you tell us about that at the moment? Well, I mean, Brett's been invited. Brett is there. Uh, we are giving awards to people such as Johnny Sane, Danny Boy Collins, uh, Robbie Brookside. Also, Johnny Storm is going to get an Outstanding Achievement Award. Uh, we're giving an award to Nathan Cruz for Breakout Performer of the Year. I mean, he, he really has been the Breakout Performer. It's not biased. You know, Brian Dixon will agree with you. I'll agree with you. Every, you know, uh, Greg Lambert will agree. Um, so he, he's getting that award. So the award ceremony we're not looking to do it once a year we're looking to do it twice a year because obviously so much stuff happens in pro wrestling um so we've offered this to Bret Hart. It's in conjunction with a national newspaper, the award. Uh, it's for, for for the match that he had with Davy Boy Smith. You know, it's one of the greatest matches to take place on UK soil, soil by none. Um, so it's not breaking any laws or rules to give him an award for that. I don't think he will get an award for that set match. And as a British industry that is rewarding the work of the, the people that have helped Build, build that industry, even though that was for another company. I, you know, I can't think of a match more fitting to, to get the first match inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, what do we watch wrestling for? For matches, you know, stories as well. But you know, those, those, all those stories lead to a match. And when you get one like that where everything was building, oh my God. So, uh, so it'd be great to, to honour Brett with that and it'll be great for him to honour us with his presence at, at being at this event and stuff. It's a really big weekend. As you say, it is probably the biggest weekend that we've ever had, certainly the biggest weekend the FWA has had since its relaunch. And I wonder, as we come into that weekend, which is going to be the climax of, of season one of the FWA, how do you think things are going generally? I know we, we talked about it not very long ago, but things are moving so fast. I think it's worth asking you again. Yeah, I mean, things are going amazingly. Uh, you know, there's, there's things, uh, it's not even things in the pipeline anymore. The things that are in the pipeline are now happening and they're happening in a big way. Um, season one comes to an end. I mean, we, we made the decision to do it in seasons. It's something that we'd had in mind for a while. I mean, no, no one's ever done that in pro wrestling. No, I mean, it, it, because nobody likes to do anything different. You know, everybody likes to just go, oh, that's what everybody else used to do. But, <clears throat> you know, it makes sense. Box sets are a really big thing you know I, I I don't watch TV um, I, I, I do not have a TV aerial I don't I don't watch television if I want to watch something I'll get a box set and I, and I watch it um, so it just made sense to me listen why don't we do FWA as, as, as a and that's why we've put so much attention into our storylines so if you if you watch the box set that we're releasing a season one it's going to be ridiculously competitively priced I mean we're trying to do it so cheaply that you know the plan is not to make much money on this but to get it in people's hands and say because if you watch how the FWA starts people said we never pulled the trigger what we did was we introduced British wrestling to the people with the characters and it was nice and pleasant and then British uproar aptly named boom that's like wow I never saw that coming and then battle lines wow I never saw that coming and art of war man this is real you know and then hope and glory and <clears throat> so it really the first season sort of lures you in with wrestling as you know it, and then bang, halfway through, it's, it's wrestling how it's gonna be in the future. Uh, and the fact that it just builds and builds to, to this crescendo, which is European Uprising. Uh, we've got the front lines on there, we've got all the different videos on there. I truly believe this is gonna be, you know, if you've got a pick, you know, you're looking at, we're trying to do it for around 20 pounds for the entire thing. You know, you've got a WWE DVD and it's 15 pounds for one show, and you've got FWA, maybe 20 pounds for like, 10 shows or 12 shows or whatever it is and all the you know the front lines we've got on the extras you're going to pick that up and as you watch our product our product gets better when you watch it in sequence you know if you got season one of 24 and you watched episode one 
and then you wait a month and then watch episode two, you're not going to enjoy it so much. You want to go, oh my, I want to watch the next one. And that's what's going to happen with FWA. You're going to see the, the, the development of characters and, you know, even people like uh, Melanie Price, who is, uh, is Spud's groupie, <clears throat> see the development of this over the story and how, how that's uh, built up since this first show. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be great. This is the resistance and we need your help.